today an mPower Pro. This is a Ubiquiti device, a power switch that has eight ports that are individually addressable. And even better, you can not only just turn them on and off through a simple web UI, but you can even see the watt burn live in real time. Now I've moved things around a little bit and I'm gonna change the labels on these systems. And that is not so easy if you don't have access to the Java-based app, which, well, it's 2020. You may not want to use that anymore. So they basically orphaned off or stopped supporting uh, any kind of new management of this particular Ubiquiti device years ago. So I'm going to show you a way through Putty we can do it. Um, the point of me clicking through these menus here is to show you you can't do it through any of this. All right. All right. Now, if we go and edit what's in the system already, I end up with issues. So kind of pointless. Um, gone down that road before, you end up with a bunch of zero on the watts if you try to edit the file that's already there. So I start fresh every time. I don't do this often, two, three, four times a year. So basically I just document the procedure and realize, yeah, I give up. I'm just gonna go reset this thing to factory defaults. And when it comes back, we'll reconnect. In my case, I have DHCP going, so I'll get the same host name because I have a DHCP reservation in my DNS server. But you can go by IP address, however you want to get into your switch. Um, so it's resetting to defaults. We'll come back in, and then we'll putty in, or SSH with whatever SSH client you like to use. And the point is, um, from there, we're actually creating a text file. And then we're um, pasting in a block of text. And actually, I've written up a little cheat sheet for me, so why don't I just show that? Hopefully, this becomes an article at some point. So there you go. Here's my little cheat sheet. Fine. I actually carry this device with me when I do, do public demos, too, of my labs. All right, so Putty's starting to come up here. We got the usual prompt. Okay, I'm in. So we have to touch this file, and actually I'll credit the article where I got this information from. It's a discussion forum. This file does not exist. So this will create it. Because again, we're at factory defaults, paste. I should also point out that this is the version of firmware 2.1.11. That is relevant. Um, people are talking about how do you do this on different versions of firmware on there. So these directions are specific to what I got. So I pay, I've run VI, I hit the I key for insert mode. All right, and then I paste a bunch of stuff now. In my case, I'm pasting in this whole block. All right, hit the escape key, because again, I'm just following along here, escape, right? So escape key, colon, WQ for right quit. All right, now if we have a look over here, we're probably gonna see the changes take effect immediately, but they're not gonna persist the reboot unless I type the save command on the right. So I got the desired result, and now I gotta physically move the machines around, but that's okay, I'll do that after I shut down. Okay, so this is gonna uh, save it to persistent memory. But to really know success, we need to reboot the switch. So naturally that kills Putty, and that's okay. When the switch comes back to life, I'll be good to go. And we should see live read out of the watts again. So I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this uh, minute, minute and a half or so, and we'll be all done. Okay, we're back in. Probably should have warned you before doing all this that you're gonna lose stats. <laughs> so be careful uh, right here in the stats tab. Things like uh, history, uh, power usage over time, it's all going to be gone. So just want to point that out. If those are tool or those are parts that you care about, um, yeah, you're going to lose them if you want to be able to rename it. But um, I do like this approach. I don't need to have a VM laying around with Java or something or the app for Ubiquity uh, for just this old M5 controller. Uh, there is a download you can do. You'll end up with Java permissions issues and firewall issues potentially. Just kind of a hassle. All I really want is Watts, next to the machine's host name and DNS. That's about it for this video. Uh, I got through showing you how to change the name and how to get it to persist through a reboot. So even if I lose power in my house, uh, all these names will be there. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.
and thank you for visiting. Tinker Try. IT at home. Bye now.